हॅलो गाईज आय एम डॉक्टर रवींद्र सावरकर अँड आय वेलकम यू बॅक टू मेड स्कूल टॉपिक फॉर दिस व्हिडिओ इज फॅसिक्युलर ब्लॉक ॲज वी हॅव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन बेसिक्स ऑफ बीसीजी पार्ट टू लेफ्ट बंडल ब्रांच डिवाइड्स इन ट्री अँड ब्रांचेस पॅटर्न टू फॉर्म टू डिव्हिजन्स ऑर फॅसिकल्स अँटेरियर डिव्हिजन ऑर फॅसिकल कंडक्ट इम्पल्स टू अँटेरियर अँड सुपिरियर वॉल ऑफ लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल अँड इट्स डायरेक्शन ऑफ कंडक्शन इज टुवर्ड सुपिरियर अँड लेफ्ट लाईक दिस posterior division or fascicle conduct impulse to posterior and inferior wall of left ventricle and its direction of conduction is toward inferior like this there are two more important concepts you should remember to understand fascicular blocks better first posterior fascicle is shorter and conduct impulse to lesser amount of musculature hence vector of activation through posterior fascicle has smaller magnitude then vector of activation through anterior fascicle second these two fascicles anastomoses that is make connections with each other at distal ends so when posterior fascicle is blocked impulse first travel through anterior fascicle then through distal anastomoses travels through posterior fascicle in retrograde direction that is in opposite to normal direction similarly when anterior fascicle is blocked impulse travels through posterior fascicle first then through distal anastomosis travels through anterior fascicle in retrograde direction so in fascicular block left ventricle is activated through conduction system only that's why qrs duration is always normal or minimally increased when anterior fascicle is blocked left ventricle is activated like this for the part of conduction through posterior fascicle vector is directed downward and right for this vector lead 2 3 and avf show small r wave whereas lead avl and 1 show small q wave vector for conduction through anterior fascicle is directed upward and left hence lead 2 3 and avf shows s wave whereas lead avl and 1 shows r wave so lead 2 3 and avf have rs pattern and lead avl and 1 have qr pattern so criteria for diagnosis of left anterior fascicular blocks are qrs duration is normal or minimally increased left axis deviation of qrs axis to beyond minus 30 degrees lead 1 and especially lead avl have qr pattern lead 2 3 and avf have rs pattern there is left axis deviation as qrs in lead 1 and 3 are leaving each other let's find out its qrs axis direction equiphasic qrs is there in lead avr hence qrs axis should be perpendicular to avr lead axis hence qrs axis direction is toward minus 60 degrees there is qr pattern in lead avl and there is rs pattern in lead 2 3 and avf QRS duration is also normal. Therefore, this ECG is suggestive of left anterior fascicular block. Left anterior fascicular block is the commonest cause of left axis deviation on ECG. Isolated left anterior fascicular block does not constitute a risk factor. In elderly, left anterior fascicular block may indicate subclinical cardiac ischemic disease. When left anterior fascicular block is present in patient with congestive cardiac failure heart disease is most likely chronic rather than acute left anterior fascicular block with right bundle branch block increases the risk of development of complete heart block left bundle branch block with left anterior fascicular block have poorer prognosis than with only left bundle branch block In posterior fascicular block conduction starts through anterior fascicle in antero superior direction then impulse goes through posterior wall encircling the lateral border like this for conduction through anterior fascicle vector is directed to left and superiorly for this vector lead 1 and avl shows r wave whereas lead 2 3 and avf shows q wave for conduction through posterior fascicle vector is directed downward and right for this vector lead 1 and avl shows s wave 
where as lead 2 3 and a wave shows r wave so there is rs pattern in lead 1 and a wave where as qr pattern in lead 2 3 and a wave so criteria for left posterior fascicular blocks are qrs duration within normal limits or minimally increased right qrs axis deviation lead 1 and avl having rs pattern lead 2 3 and avf having qr pattern qrs complexes in lead 1 and 3 are reaching toward each other hence there is right axis deviation in this ecg although there is no criteria as such in left posterior fascicular block regarding the extent of right axis deviation it is usually not beyond 120 degrees when qrs axis is beyond 120 degrees there is prominent r wave in lead avr as qrs axis comes within 90 degrees of avr lead axis hence if lead avr is showing prominent r wave one should look for other causes of right axis deviation there are qr pattern in lead 2 3 and avr along with rs pattern in lead 1 and avl qrs duration is normal hence this ecg is suggestive of left posterior fascicular block it is very difficult to derive significance of left posterior fascicular block as it is extremely rare condition similar to left anterior fascicular block left posterior fascicular block may also indicate presence of subclinical cardiac ischemic disease previously septal fascicle was thought to be a separate entity but now it is clear that septal fibers arises from left bundle branch sometimes they may get blocked and entity is still called left septal fascicular block changes of left septal fascicular block depends on the degree of activation of septum from right side if activation from right is normal septum will be activated from right to left hence there can be initial q wave in lead v1 and v2 if activation from right is also delayed septal activation occurs with left ventricular activation hence there will be no separate septal vector and there will be loss of septal q wave septal activation occurring simultaneously with left free wall activation shifts combined vector to right in horizontal plane usually toward v3 electrode hence lead v1 v2 and v3 have prominent r wave so criteria for left septal fascicular block are qrs duration normal or minimally increased normal qrs axis prominent r wave in lead v1 to v3 loss of septal q waves and presence of q wave in lead v1 and v2 left septal fascicular block is also a rare condition therefore it should always be a diagnosis of exclusion thank you for watching this video till the end if you have any query or suggestion please write it down in comment section If you like my work please like this video and share it with your friends to get notified about next video upload please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon till next video take care and keep learning